now 31, we've made it to the last type of transformation, the horizontal shifts. So if I have a function f of x, I can define a new function g of x to be f of x minus h. So please take note, we are subtracting a constant inside the grouping symbols, right? Inside the parentheses. All right, so f of x minus h, where h is a constant, is a horizontal shift of the function h of x. Oh gosh, f of x. If h is positive, the graph will shift right. If h is negative, the graph will shift left. And this can be a little convoluted. I want to be real careful in what we're talking about here. h being positive means if you saw something like f of x minus 3, all right, technically h is 3, so this would actually move 3 units right. And sometimes that seems a little counterintuitive. Students will see the minus sign and they'll say, well, oh, it should move left. No, because technically x gets lined up with x, minus sign gets lined up with minus sign, and you can see h is actually equal to 3. h is a positive number. It's because this expression says x minus h that when you see this x minus sign, h is actually the positive number, so it moves 3 units right. And if that kind of bums you out and you're like, I don't know about that, just think of this as when things are inside the parentheses, it's counterintuitive. So you see this subtraction inside the parentheses, you might think it moves three units left, it actually moves three units right. It's counterintuitive. And before we get into example six, I just want to show you a version of this. Let's take a look at the functions we were using from example five. And now instead of doing the square root of x plus one with the plus one on the outside, let me put the plus one in the parentheses. All right, and I'm gonna just turn this one off for right now. Again, I'm gonna hover over the equal sign and just hit enter. I want you to imagine what's about to happen here, right? So this is x plus one. Or another way of saying that, let me just write it here. If I had the square root of x plus one, that's like saying the square root of x minus a negative one. All right, and the reason I'm stressing this minus negative one is because we have to look at x minus h. So I'm actually subtracting a negative one, which is ultimately gonna move me one unit left. And again, if that doesn't make sense, if you're like, what are you talking about? That's fine, just remember that it's gonna be counterintuitive. If you see this plus one here, it's actually gonna move you one unit left, not one unit right. So here's, here comes my toolkit function. And did you see, it's kinda hard to see because they overlap so much but you can see this function starting at negative one. Let me go ahead and change my window. Let me make it smaller so we can see it better. Now watch, here comes my square root function. And then do you see right there? This function has been shifted one unit left. Yeah. Let's go here. And now let's put this minus four inside the grouping symbols, all right? And this might seem again counterintuitive because you see the minus four, but you're subtracting positive four. So you're actually gonna move four units to the right. So here we go, you can barely see it because here was my original function and then one, two, three, four, four units to the right, I've moved. So if I hit zoom six, here we go. Original function, one unit to the left, and then you're gonna see it pop up, four units to the right. All right, so when we have x minus h, when we're subtracting a number, inside the, that grouping symbol, it's gonna shift us left and right. Okay, so let's erase all this and let's try some of these transformations. And I'm gonna try my best to do these without my graphing calculator initially. And then we're gonna check them with, or I'll check them with my graphing calculator. So let me scoot this up. All right, now that we've learned about all sorts of transformations, let's see if we can put our knowledge to the test here. All right, so when I see this first one, I can see it's basically my parabola function, but I have two things I wanna take into account. I see this negative symbol out here, and I see this minus one inside the grouping symbol. So something outside the grouping symbol, something inside the grouping symbol. Now when you're subtracting a number, like you are here, this is the counterintuitive one. <clears throat> it's not gonna move me one unit left, it's actually gonna move me one unit right. Okay? And this negative symbol, that's out in front of here, well, that's gonna reflect my graph over the x-axis. So I have two transformations. From my original toolkit function of y equaling x squared, I need to move one unit right, 
and then I need to reflect over the x-axis. So let's see if we can make this work without our calculators. All right, so I'm gonna put in just barely, I'm gonna do it a little bit lightly so I can erase it. Oh, let me scale it, sorry. I'll put the 10 and 10 on it. So let's go three, nine and negative three, nine. Now, again, I'm just gonna kind of gently push this in, okay, because I'm gonna erase it, but there was my original parabola. Okay, so let's try and do this. I need to take this, this point, zero, zero, I need to move it one unit right and reflect it over the x-axis. Well, if I move it one unit right, I'm gonna be here, and I can't really reflect it over the x-axis because it's on the x-axis. Or another way of saying that is if I reflect it over the x-axis, it reflects onto itself. Okay, no problem. Let's take this point one, one. I need to move one unit right here, right? But then I need to reflect over the x-axis, so it's really gonna drop here. And I'm gonna start erasing the points that I don't need. All right, so I've taken care of zero, zero, and one, one. All right, now let's take care of negative one, one. I would move one unit right, which would be here, and then I would reflect it over the x-axis, which would be here. Okay, I've taken care of that one. Let's try our original point two, four. I would move to the right to two, or to three, four, but then I need to reflect it over the x-axis, so I'm gonna go three, negative four. Okay. All right, let's do it again. We're going to go one unit right, and this would be negative one, four, and then I need to reflect it, so it'll be negative one, negative four. All right, and I can start to see that parabola that's hanging out. So this was three, nine, it would become four, nine, but then it would really become four, and then we go negative nine. And same thing here, right? I would go from negative three, nine to negative two, nine but then instead of negative two, nine, I'm gonna, be, gonna become negative two, negative nine. So it's me taking my toolkit function and shifting one unit to the right and reflecting over the y-axis. Now again, I missed some points, so I'll just make them larger and then nobody knows I missed them. It looks beautiful. All right, but let's take a look see if my graph matches what the calculator would say. So let me go back to my y equals, clear all this out, clear my original one out too. We've got negative and in parentheses x minus one squared. I'm gonna hit zoom six. And that looks pretty darn close to what I have graphed. If I wanna use the table, let's see. I did, yeah, I did have zero, negative one, right? I did have one, zero. I had two, negative one. I had three, negative four, and I had four, negative nine, right? So I see all of those points lining up with what my table function would say. Okay, great. Okay, so with that, let's try and take a look at this function, all right? I can see that my, my toolkit function, this is based off of, would have been the absolute value of x. So I'm gonna have some kind of v in here, right? Just like I knew this was based off of x squared, so I was gonna have some kind of parabola. But let's talk about where all of these things are gonna, what all of these numbers are gonna do. So I can see the plus three inside the grouping symbol. First of all, that's gonna shift me three units to the left, all right? So I see one shift. I'll start writing these, there's a bunch on this one. Three units left, all right. I also see if I'm PEMDOSing it, right? I would do what was in the grouping symbols first. I would multiply it by two so I can also see that I'm gonna double my y values, right? Or I'm gonna stretch, vertically stretch. And when I say vertically stretch, right, we're doubling the y values. All right, from there I see this negative symbol and because it's on the outside of my grouping symbols, that would again reflect over the x-axis. All right, and then last but not least, I have this plus four on the outside, so that's gonna move me four units up. So I have a lot of transformations happening here because I have a lot of pieces, right? I have a four, a three, a two, and a negative symbol. All right, so here we go. Now with so many transformations to do, I'm not sure how worth it it is to graph your original function. You'd kind of have to decide um, so you could go through and do, you know, you have 0, 0, 1, 1, 2, 2, 3, 3, 
this is what your toolkit absolute value function looks like. And I could move all of these if I wanted to, right? I could go take my vertex, go three units left. Yeah, I could double that Y value and two times zero is zero, right? I could reflect it over the X axis, but since I'm on the X axis, I stay there. And then I could move four units up, one, two, three, four. So there would be my new vertex, right? And then I can do that for all of these points, but I just don't know that it's really worth it. And since we have technology, we should learn how to use our technology so that we can be efficient with our problems. All right, now, based on my one little translation, I think my vertex is gonna be negative three, four. That's my guess for my vertex, but let's, let's go find out. Let's use some technology, shall we? All right, so I go to my y equals and I say, hey, I would like you to graph negative two times the absolute value of x plus three close that parentheses, plus four. Let me hit zoom six. Well, that kind of looks like it could be the vertex at negative three, four. Let me go to my table. Ooh, nailed it, right? So I'm gonna see, I'm gonna do some symmetry here. I see negative five, zero, negative one, zero. So let me write those in. Two, three, four, five, so negative five, zero, negative one, zero. And then we see negative 4, 2, and negative 2, 2. All right, and I see a pretty good, that, that's a pretty uh, solid V that I can see happening. I, I know the general shape of this graph. So there we go. Okay. So now for h of x, I notice I have a domain issue, all right? So if I was going to take a look at my domain, I need x plus 2 to be greater than or equal to 0, which means I need x to be greater than or equal to negative 2. So that would tell me my domain was negative 2 to infinity. All right, and let's start to pick apart everything else that's going to happen here. So I see the plus 2 inside the grouping symbol, which again is inside the square root function. So I know I'm gonna, one of my translations is to go two units left. If I'm going with PEMDAS, the next thing I'm gonna take into account is this one half here. And so this is gonna be a vertical compression, right? I'm gonna have my Y values shrunk. So vertical compression which means I'm gonna do half of my y values. All right, and then last but not least, if I was doing PEMDAS, this would be the last thing I did. I'm kind of running out of room here, so I'll just, I'll just write this in here. I'll write it on my graph that I'm gonna move three units down. All right, so here we go. We've got y's, x's. Now, with the square root function, let me draw my original toolkit, right? We've been doing a lot of them. So 0, 0, 1, 1, 4, 2, 9, 3. Okay, so now let's start talking about what would happen. I would take this starting point of 0, 0. I would move two units left, all right? I would compress my y value by a half, but a half of 0 is still 0, and then I would move three units down, okay? So I've taken care of my starter point. I'm gonna take care of this next one. I'm gonna do these next four by hand. And if you're thinking, yo, I just wanna use technology, then go for it. All right, so here, I'm at one one, I need to move two units left. All right, now if I move two units left, I'm at negative one one, I need to take that Y value one, cut it in half to one half, and then I need to move three units down. So one, two, three. It's right about there. Okay. Here we go, I'm gonna take four, two, I'm gonna move three units left, so one, two, three. I'm at a Y value of two, I'm gonna shrink it to one, and then I'm gonna move three units down, so one, two, three. All right, and here we go, I'm gonna move two units left, so one, two. This has a Y value of three, I'm gonna shrink it to 1.5, and then I'm gonna move three units down, so one, two, three. All right. 
So, as I look at this, this is a very compressed square root function. All right, let's try this. Let's see if it matches anything I had. So we'll do 1 half times the square root of x plus 2. Close that parentheses. I will subtract 3. Let's hit zoom 6. And I do see something down here. It's pretty scrunched, right, because it's been vertically compressed. Let's look at the table. I did have negative 2, negative 3. I did have negative 1, negative 2.5. I did have, where is it? Ooh, I did not have 2, negative 2. Did I mess something up? I must have not shifted the way I wanted to. So this should be 2, negative 2. I see it here at 1, negative 2. Oops. Always good to check on technology. You'll have to scroll back through the video and find where I messed up. And then let's see, I thought this one, where's the next point five? Was I at seven? I want to see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So I did this one right. This is seven, negative 1.5. All right, so somewhere in there when I was shifting left to two, I must not have gone far enough. All right, happens to the best. That's why you check yourself. Okay, so with all of the transformations that we've done, let's take a look at them. They're summarized in this gigantic box. All right, so here we go. So in these descriptions, all of these constants are positive, okay? So if I take your function, your original f of x, and I add a constant outside, it's gonna go up k units. If I subtract a positive constant, it'll go down k units. So take a look, adding and subtracting outside the function, outside the grouping symbols moves you up and down. If you add or subtract inside the grouping symbols, it's gonna move you left and right, and it's counterintuitive. All right, so we see H, ooh, gosh, as I look at this, oh, no, 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 it's right, I'm, I'm messing with myself. So if we see X plus H, we're gonna to go to the left, and if we do X minus H, we're gonna to go to the right. It is counterintuitive. So when you see the plus sign, you go left, when you see the minus sign, you go right. If you're going to multiply outside your function, all right, so now we get to the multiplying either outside or inside. If you multiply outside your function, you're gonna stretch your graph if that number is bigger than one. If it's a fraction, you're gonna shrink it, okay? So stretching and compressing. Now, if you multiply inside your function, all right, you gotta be careful. If you multiply inside your function, if that number is a fraction, you're actually gonna stretch it and if it's a number larger than one, you're gonna shrink it, all right? So it's counterintuitive. The larger your number, the more shrunk, the more compressed you become horizontally. And then you've got your two reflections. Reflect, or excuse me, negative symbol outside the parentheses or outside the grouping symbols, reflect over the x-axis. Inside the grouping symbols, reflect over the y-axis. So it's the, a bunch of the four math operations, right? Addition, subtraction, right? Outside or inside. Then we have multiplication or division, depending on if you have a fraction or not, right? Outside or inside. And then this negative symbol, outside or inside. And those are the ways that we can translate graphs. Shifting them up, down, left, right, stretching them, shrinking them, and reflecting them over the x or y axis. All right, so with that, that's gonna put, that's gonna be the end of our um, shifting our, our transform, transforming our graphs, but we're going to take a look at even and odd functions next, and that is the last example in this section. I will see you in a bit, gang. Bye!